So we're back again to talk about more time. I'm sure if you've stuck around my channel for a second, this should come as no surprise to you. I've gone over at length how Mordheim is such a strong game because of just the nature of its campaign system and how as you build your warband, you start to see a story unfold with characters being killed or getting injured or gaining special skills and abilities that make them stronger and how rivalries can be formed between warbands as you progress down a campaign. The game is really good at providing sort of a natural narrative through all of the random occurrences that happen in the post game and just the random nature of the action during the game. Because each scenario has a little different flair and some flavor attached to them, you can see a little piece of the story being told through each battle you have, especially if you face the same warbands over and over again. You'll start to sort of build a lore around the warbands that are involved in your campaign. This can be really immersive and it really makes the game feel alive, but there's no real plot going on other than the warbands are vying for control and they're fighting to secure Weirdstone for their various reasons. In a previous video, I did talk about the map campaign, which is cool because it gives more context to the battles in the form of locations and specific perks that are earned when you control a location. And this can be one of the most immersive ways to play more time for your group if all you've done is play the scenarios out of the main rulebook. Provide some really high stakes to the battles and each win or loss gets more and more important as the campaign goes on. You know, there's a story to be had in there but there's no narrative overtly being told to you. In another video I made, I talked about the three types of campaigns that I sort of semi-arbitrarily labeled as an open campaign, a limited campaign, and a narrative campaign. Open campaign needs very little explanation. The limited campaign needs a little less explanation as well. It's just a set number of games or a set goal to your campaign. Uh, most weird stone collected, most wins after a certain amount of games, that kind of thing. But I did mention and briefly describe the idea of a narrative campaign. One campaign in which a story is being told and characters are described and plot devices are used to progress the story along as you play. Now, these campaigns can be hard to make and hard to run, but they're very rewarding if you value story and narrative in your games. Like if you come from a Dungeons and Dragons background like I do, or if you've played a lot of story-driven video games like RPGs, then adding some more narrative to your game can be a really rewarding experience. But as I mentioned earlier, it's difficult to do. There's a lot of work that needs to be done ahead of time to prepare the story, prepare scenarios, and make a cohesive story that's wrapped up over the course of a campaign. Now, I tried to write a video describing exactly how to build a narrative campaign, but I was having a really hard time because there are infinite ways to write a narrative campaign because there's an infinite amount of stories to be told. I guess there is sort of a structure, you know, you want your overarching goals, your, you know, your background plot that is sort of driving the action. I guess I was just having a really hard time explaining that process since I'm not super well versed in writing narrative campaigns. So it's a very hard subject for me to teach. So what I did instead is I went ahead and wrote my own narrative campaign to share with everyone to try and explain what is great about a narrative campaign and what the possibilities are. So over the last several months, I've been working on this campaign. It's called The Procession of More, and it's a narrative campaign that takes place over six games. Now, this campaign is actually based on a campaign write-up that was featured in Fanatic Online magazine called Thy Soul to Keep. And the plot of that is there's a high priest of Moore named Solomon Vantor. He's sort of gone rogue and gone missing, and the dead are suffering because he's no longer ministering to them. So Moore, the god of death, sends a vision out to priests around the area and to help minister the dead and see them receive safe passage to the land of the dead. But as the plot thickens and as the campaign progresses, you find out that not everything is as it seems, and there's a bit of treachery involved. There's a great campaign write-up 
And I wanted to sort of take that campaign and expand it and revise it. So really this project is a revision of that original campaign. And I tried to make it something that is self-contained and easy to pick up for new players who might have never run a narrative campaign. So I'm a graphic designer by trade, so I really wanted to make something that looked like an official Mordheim product or something that Games Workshop might have released. I don't know if they've ever released little self-contained campaign booklets like this for any of their games, but I feel like they're a good idea and I think it'd be a, a fun little way to get people interested in the game. So I took a lot of the original artwork from the rule book, took all the original fonts, and made something that looks like a product you might find on a bookshelf or maybe slotted in with your White Dwarf magazine when it came in the mail. So it starts out with a little story overview and this is almost word for word taken, taken from that uh, campaign right up in Fanatic Online magazine. And I do credit the original authors here at the bottom and it goes over basically what led up to the warbands coming to Mordheim and kind of gives you an idea of why you're here. This next section is an overview of the region that the campaign takes place in. Uh, one thing I should mention is there are lots of campaign settings that give more of a narrative to the experience. And a lot of these can be found on Broheim, but most of them don't take place inside of Mordheim. And I think the reason why I like Mordheim so much is because of the setting. It's that ruined city. It's that localized apocalypse. You know, you start to become, as you as you play game after game of Mordheim, it's almost like you're becoming more familiar with the city. Even though each game is laid out differently, and each game will look different, you feel like you've been there before and it feels, it starts to feel familiar. So I wanted to present something that did take place in the city so players can uh, feel like Mordheim is more of a place that they're familiar with. So anyway, this whole section here goes over the setting you're in, what it looks like, uh, a little bit of the history of it. And this is all, again, taken mostly from that original campaign. And then we have a concise overview of what happens in this campaign. It takes place over six scenarios, each one being a one-on-one -on -one battle and a final scenario that can involve every player in the campaign. Now, while this campaign was designed for an even number of players where each scenario is a one-on-one -on -one battle, there are actually rules that I've included to adapt any given scenario to a multiplayer battle like those you'd find in Town Crier number five. So you don't need to worry if you've got an odd number of players or if not every player can make it to each session. Section talks about unique models you might need for this for the uh, campaign. So not every scenario will need unique models, but this section goes over what you will need. Another unique thing this campaign offers is each warband receives their own priest. It's a priest of more. There is a priest of more hired sword featured on Broheim, but this is not the same thing. This is a unique character. Uh, and this is also an idea that was presented in Thy Soul to Keep, that original campaign. Each priest has the same stats, and they have some notes here uh, stating that they can't be killed because they're sort of integral to the plot. And each priest is supposed to have their own unique specialty. Uh, these are unique powers that they can use in combat that make them different from the other priests. Because there are six and everyone should be unique, you're technically limited to six players in this campaign. But you can make some amendments or come up with your own specialties or perhaps double up on some of them if you have more than six. Another thing is the Ritual of Binding. This is a section that was added to the post game, and this is how you power up your priest. During the post game, there'll be sort of a silent bidding war. Players will write down how many Weirdstone they're willing to bid to complete this ritual. And then the player who bids the most gets to roll on this table and that's how their priest levels up because priests are sort of treated like dramatis persona. And the final new mechanic here is the secrets, secrets of Vantor. Uh, Vantor is sort of a character that you're investigating uh, in this campaign. And as you learn more of the plot going on, you start to earn secrets. And these secrets are crucial to the final scenario. So the more secrets you have, the better an edge you'll have at winning the final scenario and thus winning the campaign. Secrets can also be used during exploration. You're allowed to spend any secrets you've earned 
to re-roll dice during your exploration phase. So we have some flavor here that you can read if you're interested in uh, an overture, sort of a uh, introduction to the plot. And then you have the scenario list. So there's all six scenarios and they're detailed just like they are in the core rulebook from Wardheim with all the rules for terrain you'll need, the setup, any special rules, and the stats for any unique characters. And the final scenario is this large spread but I'll try not to spoil any of that. So it's cool because the prologue here gives you pretty much everything you need to know about why you're in Mordheim and what the current story is right as you start the campaign. This is really all a new player would need to read uh, before their first game to know why they're here. The scenarios are meant to be played in order, so it is a linear campaign, so it's not too difficult for new players to wrap their head around the process. And there's detailed rules for how to compensate players who might have joined the campaign late or missed uh, a few games. And then these are the ways in which you can amend any given scenario or how you can modify the scenarios to accommodate more players. Like, as I said, I tried to write a video that would explain how to build a narrative campaign, but I just couldn't do it. Um, I wasn't able to find the words or the proper structure to do it because they can all be different. So this is a pretty good example of what a narrative campaign can be for your group. And I encourage players to take the ideas presented in this or the structure and attach their own story to it and come up with their own narrative campaigns because I would love for the player base to start writing things like this in greater volume so people can sort of treat Mordheim as you would Dungeons and Dragons where you have legendary modules like you know curse of strahd or temple of elemental evil or, or tomb of annihilation things like that it would be very cool if there were just there were campaigns that people could run and share stories about speaking of story one thing i forgot to mention is in the back here there's an epilogue so after each scenario uh, you read an epilogue and so the plot will be revealed through these and so after each game players are encouraged to get together and read these to sort of learn what their warband went through and how the plot moves forward. Again, it's kind of just a fun way to give more context to the individual battles. Now, all of these scenarios are custom made. Some of them are based on existing scenarios. For example, the first game is basically the chance encounter scenario with uh, one minor adjustment being the way you earn secrets of Vantor. Executioner's Square, which is pretty different, it involves players trying to fight towards the center as ghosts are pushing them backwards and threatening to harm them as they approach. Then you have the Jail. This was one of the most fun scenarios for me. We had enough people to test this with two tables during our campaign. I left the description of the creatures in this scenario vague, so I got to see how we interpreted the character of the warden and the guards differently and uh, it was just a really fun battle in the center to try and be the one to slay the beast and uh, try and infiltrate the jail to earn more secrets. We have the cemetery of St. Voller. This is one I had to modify after testing because the main mechanic is the dead rise as you play. So zombies are going to be ambushing you as you fight towards the center but the statue in the center of the scenario is sort of a sanctuary where the the dead can't reach you so you're encouraged to push through the center but the dead are going to be rising to try and stop you this scenario scenario number five is basically the occupy scenario but you're encouraged to try and move your priests around to get them into each building because you earn secrets as you enter those buildings so again based on an existing scenario but with a slight modification to uh, make it more interesting and just a bit different and then of course the final scenario was an epic battle between all the warbands involved you've come to the final pivotal moment of the campaign the climax and you're battling it out to basically seal the fate of mordheim and perhaps the empire far beyond so again a lot of these scenarios are just modifications of the scenarios in the main rulebook with some added mechanisms and uh, just some new flavor to make it interesting and tie into the whole story. So I've made all these files available on a Google Drive, which I will link in the description of this video. And I encourage people to download it and read it. Even if you don't plan on playing this campaign, 
it could be a fun read and give you some inspiration to come up with your own campaigns in the future. So if you've ever wanted to dive into a narrative campaign, but you haven't really known how, this might be a good option for you. And I hope those of you who do play it will either leave comments on this video or I've included my email address on the first page here. You can send me comments, feedback. Perhaps I'll put out a revised version of this once it's been tested a little bit more. So again, thank you all for watching. I hope those of you who choose to read this uh, enjoy it and make good use of it. And like always, hope you have fun.